Hi everyone, I welcome you to Maulana Ajad National Urdu University. This is Dr. K. Nagendra, Assistant Professor from the Department of English. And today, I am going to talk about methods of English language teaching. Before we talk about methods, let me talk about uh, a brief introduction what exactly a methods are. Language teaching method means a coherent set of links between actions and thoughts in language teaching. Here actions are techniques whereas thoughts are principles. It is important to recognize that methods link thoughts and actions because teaching is not entirely about one other. It's very important for a teacher to become aware of thoughts and guide your actions in the classroom. Everyone knows that being a good teacher means giving positive feedback to learners and being concerned about their affective side on their feelings. Let me talk about a method. I believe that you all aware of what exactly a method is in general meaning. And the meaning, uh, a definition which you are aware of is that is method is a systematic way of teaching. But let me talk about what exactly a method according to methods of teaching English language. All the methods include prescriptions for the teachers and the learners. They are a prepackaged set of specifications of how the teacher should teach, how the learner should learn from a particular theory of language learning. For the teacher, methods prescribe what materials and activities should be used, how they should be used and what the role of the teacher should be. Whereas for the learners, methods prescribe what approach learning the learner should take and what roles the learner should adopt in the classroom. Well, so far we talked about a brief introduction to method. Let me talk about uh, what are the methods. As you all know that the first and foremost method which I am going to talk about that is grammar translation method which can also be called as classical method. The grammar translation method was called the classical method since it was first used in the teaching of classical languages Latin and Greek. So I want you to remember one thing. When I say classical languages, I want immediately you to recollect uh, like Sanskrit, Latin, Greek, Italian and other languages. So that was the foundation for English language teaching. That's why we always treat uh, Grammar translation method was one of the oldest methods in English language teaching. Grammar translation method was used for the purpose of helping students read and appreciate foreign language literature. Grammar translation method also thought that foreign language learning would help students grow intellectually. Let me move on to characteristics of grammar translation method. Learning a foreign language is to be able to read literature written in it. See, I want you to understand when I say literature because in olden days they used to have only the literature based on all the classical languages. That's why that was the primary objective for all the learners, those who are willing to learn a foreign language. Literary language is superior to spoken language. If students are able to translate from one language to another, they are considered successful language learners. The ability to communicate in the target language is not a goal of foreign language instruction. The primary skills to be developed are reading and writing in grammar translation method. There was a little attention is given to speaking and listening and almost none to pronunciation. It means they emphasized much on reading and writing and they completely neglected speaking, listening and pronunciation. The teacher is the authority in the class. It means that whatever teacher says, students have to simply follow. There was no interaction. There was no question and answer session. It's very important that students should get the correct answer. Otherwise, they will be punished. Learning is facilitated through attention to similarities between the target language and the native language. Native language, I mean to say that it's student's mother tongue. Deductive application of an explicit grammar rule is a useful pedagogical technique in GTM. It's very important for you to understand the difference between deductive and inductive. Deductive is all about giving more rules first, 
than examples. So students used to be feel very bored like when they go with deductive application of grammar. Language learning provides good mental exercise. Students should be conscious of grammatical rules of the target language. In GTM, GTM stands for grammar translation method, don't ever get confused. There is little student initiation and also less interaction among the learners. There are no principles in grammar translation method which relate students' feelings. They hardly understand students' feelings because whatever they say, that's completely right. It's all about authoritative. Vocabulary and grammar are emphasized in grammar translation method. And the other important one is reading and writing are the primary skills that students should work on. Like as I already told you that, like they completely neglected other skills of like speaking and listening and pronunciation. What is the role of students' native language? How it plays a crucial role in grammar translation method? Let me explain you what exactly and how it plays a crucial role in grammar translation method. The meaning of the target language is made clear by translating the student's native language. Please don't misunderstand me when I say that native language. It's all about I want you to understand it is student's mother tongue. Let me give you an example. Suppose if your mother tongue is Urdu, the language which we learn from our parents. And the language is used in class is mostly student's native language. That shows the importance of native language in grammar translation method. They always used to translate from mother tongue, that is native language to another language. Shall we move on to direct method? That's one of the popular methods uh, even in 20th century. I hope you are going to have a, a very good session about this direct method. Gwen had been one of the 19th century reformers to attempt to build a methodology around observation of child language learning. History of language teaching attempts have been made to make second language more like first language learning. Servier, another important applied linguist, and other believers in the natural method argued that a foreign language could be thought without translation or the use of learners' native language if meaning was conveyed directly through demonstration and action. There were many linguists in the 19th century who tried to apply natural principles. Natural principles means how a child learns a language from their parents. Of learning as a child does to the second language classroom. Among those who best presented the method were F. Frank. He thought a language could best be thought by using it actively in the classroom. Second important applied linguist and he says intensive oral interaction in the target language. A third one, M. Burlage. He referred to direct method used in his school as the Burlage method. The main guidelines for teaching oral language principles in Burlage schools are, these are very interesting. I want you to understand and I want you to pay attention what I'm going to talk about now. See, let me explain you what are the oral language principles in Berlage schools. Never translate, but demonstrate. Never explain, but act. Never make a speech, ask question. Never imitate mistakes, but correct them. Never speak with single words, instead use sentences. Never speak too much, make students speak much. Never use the book, use your lesson plan. Never jump around. Yeah, there are many people, those who beat around the bush, but don't ever do that. Simply follow your plan. Never go too fast, keep the pace of the student. Never speak too slowly, but speak normally. Never speak too quickly, speak naturally. Never speak too loudly, speak naturally. Never be impatient and take it easy. So these are all the popular principles which used to follow in Burleigh's schools. Direct method's name comes from the fact that meaning is to be conveyed directly in target language. See, I want you to understand it is not from translating from native language to another language. Or it's not like uh, translating from Urdu language to English. So you have to speak 
only in English. That is what it means. It is also called natural method as it is based on the way children learn their language. The direct method aims at establishing the direct bond between thought and expressions to experience the new language. It is also based on the assumption that the learner should experience the new language in the same way as they experience their mother tongue. Teacher must encourage direct, spontaneous use of the foreign language in the classroom. It's very essential for a teacher to motivate them, to guide them how to come up with the target language and how to speak in target language. It is teacher's responsibility to provide more opportunities to the learners. The teacher replaced the textbook in the early stages of learning. Suppose if you try to compare with GTM, that is grammar translation method and direct method, like there was a lot of changes. The main thing is like we used to focus on textbooks uh, when we say that grammar translation method, but when it, we move on to direct method that has been replaced with a teacher, teacher has to play an active role in direct method. Speaking began with systematic attention to pronunciation. See, this is also one of the changes which I want you to observe in direct method. That's why even today it's one of the popular methods. Known words could be used to teach new vocabulary using mime, demonstration, and pictures. So it's very important to make use of these techniques in order to promote a target language. Only the use of target language is allowed in class and students are encouraged to think in the target language. As I already told you that speaking in target language is very essential and in direct method. Grammar should be thought inductively. See, I want you to be clear enough when I say deductive and inductive. Inductive is quite opposite to deductive. Here, we would correlate all the examples or we would take or we would explain more examples from their real life. Then we talk about rules. Students never feel bored. They love to speak in English. This method is based on sound principles of education. It is also believes in introducing the particular before general, concrete before abstract, and practice before theory. The teacher should demonstrate, not explain or translate. Vocabulary should be learned in full sentences rather than memorizing whole lists. Here I would like to emphasize on one thing. When we talked about grammar translation method, like we used to have all the isolated vocabulary, like which are not so contextual, but it's completely changed here in direct method because we learn them according to situations and contextual words which are sentences. Self-correction facilitates language learning. Like here, teacher will not correct each and everything, but uh, teacher would make realize all the students to rectify themselves. That's also one of the important characteristic features of direct method. First, speaking. First, speaking is taught and then reading and writing. This is also one of the drastic changes uh, when we compare with grammar translation method and direct method. There we used to give much importance for reading and writing, but whereas here, speaking first. The learner should use the target language in realistic, everyday situations. Whenever we ask them to talk about their day-to-day -day things or the things which, are, which they are familiar with, they will not feel burdened. They always love to speak in language. So this is one of the important characteristic features of uh, direct method. It's very, very important to look into or to talk about techniques of direct method. The first and foremost thing is question and answer exercise. The teacher asks questions of any nature and the student answer. The second important one is dictation. The teacher chooses a great appropriate passage and reads the text aloud and he reads the passage three times, reading aloud. This is also one of the important techniques through which we can develop their pronunciation. We can also make them to get rid of that fear and hesitation. 
Students take turn reading sections of passage, play or dialogue. Getting students to self-correct, as I already told you that this is one of the important techniques. The teacher should have the students self-correct by offering the choice between the they said and the correct answer. The next important one is conversation practice. This is also another important technique through which we can develop speaking skills of learners. The teacher asks students a number of questions in the target language which the students are able to answer correctly. Later, the student asks each other their own questions using the same grammatical structures. Last but not least, that is map drawing. Students are given a map without labeled, then students label it by using the directions the teacher gives. And we also have another important one that is paragraph writing. And this is also one of the important techniques which we can use to develop the written communication as well as even a spoken communication. The students are asked to write a passage in their own words. They can do this from memory or use of reading passage in the lesson as a model. What is the goal of a teacher's in direct method? The goal of the teachers is to encourage students to think in the target language. See here, I want you to understand. Think all the time in target language. There is no scope for your mother tongue. The role of the teacher is to direct the class activities and the role of the student is more active than they are in grammar translation method. Because as I already told you that there was a very less interaction or no interaction among the learners and as well as even teacher to student relation. But here that has completely changed in direct method. The interactions between student and teacher can go both the ways. Teacher and students and students and teacher. Teacher and students are like partners in the teaching and learning process. Students can also converse each other in target language so that they can develop their communication skills and at the same time they will get rid of that fear and hesitation in speaking target language. Let me talk about and emphasize some of the merits of direct method. What are the merits of direct method? One of the merits of this method is that it promises to teach the language and not about the language. I hope you understood. To teach the language and about the language. When I say uh, to teach the language, we learn about language, how to speak, how to communicate freely without hesitate, any hesitation. We learn whatever we think it is necessary. But when you say that about language and we usually focus on the origin of the language and history and other things, it's a natural method which teaches language in the same way the mother tongue is acquired so that most of the learners they will not feel so difficult because and we took it as a model that is how we learn how a children learn a language from their parents only the target language is used and the learning is contextualized it's not just a talking about isolated vocabulary but we always come up with contextual language because we correlate with our day-to-day -day, uh, situations and real-life examples. It emphasizes and speech made it more attractive for those who have needs of real communication in the target language. It is also one of the first methods to introduce the teaching of vocabulary. Like see in grammar translation method, we said that or we talked about like we learn a vocabulary isolated, but here we learn a contextual vocabulary which we can remember for a longer time. We can also use them in our day-to-day -day language because our primary objective of direct method is to speak in target language. I hope it's very clear what exactly a direct method is. But apart from all of these merits or advantages and all the pros, but there are also some demerits or limitations to direct method. Direct method required native speakers. What does it mean? Native speakers are all about whose mother tongue is English or who had native-like fluency in the foreign language. Do you think that it is possible to have all the native speakers? Are teachers from Britain, America, New Zealand, 
Australia and whose mother tongue is English. It is highly impossible. That is why and most of the critics criticized uh, this one of the limitations to direct method. It was largely dependent on the teacher's skill rather than on a textbook and not all teachers were proficient enough in the foreign language to adhere to the principles of the method. So, like this is also one of the limitations in direct method to find out all the good teachers those who are well enough or those who are proficient enough with good English. And the Harvard psychologist Roger Brown has documented some problems with direct method and pointed out that it did not take well in public schools that is what I just explained you okay it will not work out because it needs very small number of students but most of our you just take an example of our Indian classrooms like most of them are large classrooms where we usually have around 60, 70 sometimes even 100 nobody knows so, direct method will not work out in such a large class classes because it needs individual concentration. Where the constraints of the other problems also with the direct method are budget, classroom size, time and teacher made such a method difficult to use. So, these are all the constraints to direct method like which we cannot implement. The British supply linguist Henry Sweet also recognized its limitations and he also came up with so many ideas like how a direct method is not going to be worked out and particularly in public schools or classrooms like in Indian context. After short popularity in the beginning of the 20th century, it soon began to lose its appeal because of these constraints. So, though we have so many advantages, so many merits but it also have uh, some demerits. But it is one of the popular methods in 20th century. Let me conclude what exactly a direct method like how it plays a crucial role to come up with what we call it as a method. The direct method can be regarded as the first language teaching method to have caught the attention of teachers and language teaching specialists. It also offered a methodology that appeared to move language into a new era and mark the beginning of the methods era. It shows the importance like importance of direct method, how it plays a crucial role like what we have been calling as method. So, it contributed a lot like what we have been calling as methods. I hope you understood what exactly direct method is. Shall we move on to another important method which you really love because we are living in a digital technology world that is in 21st century. The next important one is the audio lingual method. It can also be called as ORMI method. You may be puzzled by looking at ORMI method, but I will tell you what, why do we call it as a ORMI method. With the outbreak of World War II, ORMIs needed to become morally proficient in the languages of their allies and enemies as quickly as possible this teaching technique called as army method. So, all these army people, they were in badly need of communication. You just imagine that if we want to pass the message to one of our colleagues, our fellow beings, it is very, very important to be proficient enough with that English. That is why we call it as army method. This was the first to be based on linguistic theory and behavioral psychology. Linguist at the University of Michigan invented this method in the late 1950s. Charles Fries in the year 1945 of the University of Michigan led the way in applying principles from structural linguistics in developing the method and for this reason it has been called for some time as Michigan method. So, it has three names. I hope you are familiar with audiolingual method, but it can also be called as Michigan method or army method. Do not ever get confused if you listen to a Michigan or army method. Later in its development, principles from behavioral psychology which is by B. F. Skinner in the year 1957, like all the principles and behavioral psychology were incorporated in this 
particular method that is audiolingual method. Based on Skinner's behaviorism theory, it assumed that a human being can be trained using a system of reinforcement. It is a kind of drilling. Correct behavior receives positive feedback while errors receives negative feedback. It also emphasizes on the acquisition of patterns in the common everyday dialogues. This method was widely used in the United States and other countries in the 1950s and 1960s and it says that language is a process of habit formation. Grammar teaching is inductive rather than deductive. Like this is the similar to direct method because we give more examples than rules. So, most of the learners would love to, to come with grammar. The meanings of words can be learned only in linguistics and cultural context. This is also one of the changes because when we correlate or when we come up with a cultural, okay, because most of the learners are familiar with their culture. So, when we come up with that particular material, like which talks about all the language and that would definitely fetch the learners and to come up with language. So, it focuses much on linguistics, which is study of languages and cultural context. Set phrases are memorized with a focus of intonation. See, intonation is one of the important things which I want you to consider because when you come across a native speakers of English or maybe even if you want to have intelligibility in your language, it is very, very important to know where to put falling tone, rising tone or fall rise or rise fall or level tone. So, even if you want to have the beauty of your pronunciation or good language, intonation is very, very important. So, it focused on intonation because the primary objective of audiolingual method is to emphasize on day to day conversations. Audiolingual method drills students in the use of grammatical sentence patterns. It also unlike the direct method has a strong theoretical base in linguistics and psychology. Vocabulary is thought in context and here one more interesting thing that that is audio visual aids are used. I told you several times that like picture speaks are louder than words. So, as we are living in 21st century, it is very easy to make use of all audio visual aids, but this was the first time during the audio lingual method they made use of audio and visual aids in order to promote language. Grammatical explanations are kept to minimum, like they did not focus much on grammar, 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 what we used to hear in grammar translation method, but they minimized it. Focus is on pronunciation. Pronunciation also one of the important factors which we need to consider because once if we listen to more English, once if we are good at our articulation, our pronunciation and that is very clear and because intelligibility is very, very important with our language. Like in case if you want to pass the message to somebody, if they are not able to follow your language, it is going to be vain. So, and audio lingual method also focused on pronunciation. Let me move on to techniques of audio lingual method. What are the techniques which they made use in audio lingual method? The first and for most thing dialogue memorization. Like they need to practice. Suppose if I say that, oh she is coming and she is beautiful. Like even students have to repeat all the dialogues, okay. And it is a kind of drilling. So, dialogue memorization is, memorization is the one of the primary techniques of audiolingual method. Backward build up drill, repetition drill, chain drill, single slot substitution drill, multiple slot substitution drill, transformation drill, question and answer drill, use of minimal pairs, complete the dialogue, grammar, game. These are all the techniques which they made use in audiolingual method through which they developed learners communication skills that is speaking skills. Apart from speaking skills, they also concentrated on pronunciation, intonation, and inductive grammar 
and here even they also made use of audio visual aids in order to teach effectively a foreign language. But here one thing I wanted to tell you, if you listen to all the techniques of audiolingual method, drill, 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 it's just because of the drill it got even a criticism. That was the reason people started even forgetting about uh, even audiolingual method. That's why they moved on to even other important methods. It's not so popular, but since we've been talking about uh, teaching methods of English language teaching, I feel that it's very important to talk about and discuss what exactly a reading method. The primary objective of reading method is to make the students fluent readers. So it focuses much on reading. Michael West, the one who developed reading method, thought in India, argued that the ability to read fluently in English was more important than speaking in English. Actually, he personally experienced all the Indian classrooms because he taught in India, I believe in Calcutta, if I am not wrong. Okay, he started working in India and he taught for all the Indian students. And he came to know that first, before we talk about all other skills of language, listening, writing, speaking, and we need to emphasize much on reading skills. That was the personal opinion of uh, this gentleman that is Michael West, who himself taught for Indian classrooms. Reading texts are graded in terms of vocabulary and structures. It's not like it's just graded, okay, these are all the words and structures so that he, they can develop structures and vocabulary. Intensive reading text and extensive reading text. See, I want you to understand when I say that extensive and intensive. Extensive is all about, I know that you would love to listen that term because we are very much interested to do that extensive reading. It's all about reading for pleasure, reading for entertainment. You just take an example of magazines, novels, which we love most to read. So through which we can develop reading skills. That's what, that was the opinion of Michael West. But I know that you are eagerly waiting for what is intensive reading. I am here to explain you. Intensive reading is all about like the subjects which we read for the academic purpose. Suppose you just imagine that if you are doing a course or degree course or MA, if you want to get a degree and you need to complete certain subjects, finally you will be given a certificate. That's why we call it as, it doesn't matter whether you love it or not, but you have to read them and complete all the exams, then only you will be given a certificate. That is what we call them as intensive reading. In intensive reading, it's for academic purpose. Extensive is all about for the sake of pleasure and entertainment. It is also practiced in the classrooms today as a part of language development strategy. But it's not so popular because this method is not very much practiced in today as its main aim is not reproduction and comprehension. But because these days the reproduction and comprehension is very, very important. It's just because of all this, like it, it's not become so popular. That's one of the demerits of uh, reading method and even it hasn't got wider attention. This was the method which was proposed by C.J. Dodson in the year 1967. Bilingual itself says very clearly that it is more than one language. It may, when we say that multilingual, more than two languages. So, here the title itself says very clearly we can use uh, two languages. In bilingual method, it incorporates different aspects of the direct method and grammar translation method. So it's very, very important, okay, if you want to understand this uh, bilingual method and you should have an idea about what exactly direct method and grammar translation method. Imitation and interpretation of foreign language is a lot. The main aim of this method is to speak and write fluently in both mother tongue and target language. This method also adapts methods and techniques for effective teaching. 
and it is also freed from the uses of mother tongue. It's completely based on a teacher's guilt. And last but not least, that is CIFL, what we call it as a flu. Experiments proved usefulness of this method. They have experimented on bilingual method. They came up with a very good results, how it is going to be very helpful. So far, we talked about so many methods like grammar translation method and direct method, audiolingual method, and we also talked about reading method and bilingual method. But still, people are not so happy because people started mixing up all the methods. That's why finally they came up with electric method. So here, we can mix up all the methods that's completely based on a teacher. Like, if teacher is efficient enough to make use of all these methods and they can mix up them according to the situation. Choice of different methods. A teacher has a choice. They can, whatever the methods which we talked about so far, they can mix up all the methods and if they think that, if that is useful, they can. Suppose if they are teaching a speaking skills, like they can switch over to either audiolingual method or direct method. That's up to the teacher according to the uh, need of learners. Frequent changes in methods. So as I already told you that a teacher has flexibility to switch over to other method according to learner's needs. Teacher can teach any aspect here. It's not that like you have to teach only literature or something else, but they can switch over. Okay, but the primary objective is we need to fulfill the needs of the learners. It doesn't require extra source of material if teacher is competent enough. So it's very important, I want you to think about it. Okay, and last but not least, that is skilled teacher can integrate all the best points. As I already told you that electric method is all about mixture of all the methods. GTM, direct method, audiolingual method, reading method, bilingual method, but it's a mixture, but it all depends on a teacher, how effectively they make use of all these skills according to the learner's needs. Well, so far we talked about the popular methods in language teaching. First, we started with grammar translation method, which can also be called as a classical or one of the oldest methods in language teaching. That was the foundation. We talked about all the techniques and other things. Then we moved on to the famous and popular method that is direct method. And we also talked about audiolingual method, like where we started using, or even we also started keeping them in order, L, S, R, W. That was the first time where we came up with that series of L, S, R, W, which became so popular even today. And even that was the first time they also started using of audio and visual aids. And then we moved on to talking about a reading method, which can also be called as Michael West method. And finally, we talked about bilingual method. I told you that this is one of the popular methods and which became so popular in India. And I concluded with electric method. It's completely teacher choice. It's all the mixture of methods. If teacher is competent enough with all these methods, we can go according to learner's needs. I hope you had a great session. Like if you were really interested to know more about methods of teaching English, and here are the some books. Approaches and Methods in Language Teaching by Richards and Rogers. That's one of the popular books. Even I did collect lots of information from these books. The second one is Techniques and Principles in Language Teaching. The latest book which you wanted to read in practical way, that is The Practice of English Language by Jeremy Harmer. And there are also even other books that completely depends on your interest. Like if you want to refer other books, you can, but it's all about your passion, love towards these methods of English language teaching. You can contact on
thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a nice session. See you with another important topic. Till then, I'm going to sign off. Bye.